Hello! This week's episode is one of my favorites. It's the Odyssey of Flight 33, uh, which is all about a weird sort of time travel and it ties into a lot of, of what is essentially pop culture at this point. So, um, the dialogue in the actual cockpit of this airplane was written by uh, Rod Sterling's brother, who's called Robert, so it's Rob and Rod, and uh, they they talked to several um, air traffic you know pilots and stuff. And and once this episode aired, they said you know this is one of the most authentic pieces of of, of how they would actually have interacted. Uh, I always find stuff like that very interesting. I have a, a copy of. Um, Dirty Harry, I think it is. Yes, it's Dirty Harry. And they actually sent Dirty Harry uh, screening uh, reels off to the San Francisco Homicide Department uh, and the police to get them to sort of weigh in on, is this feasible? Is this how an investigation would be run? And and getting that sort of authenticity is pretty cool, I think. Uh, Rod had this idea from for this episode when he heard that American Airlines had built a full interior of an airplane for for training purposes and you could just shoot there right you didn't have to build an airplane from scratch so it's pretty cool so you have both a cockpit and you have uh the galley and you have a row of passenger seats with one of the more wasted characters ever uh this this group captain the attache to uh, the british embassy who only notes that there's been a change in speed he should have done so much more, right? If it had been a, a full-length movie, he would have had a, a big epic part of it, I'm sure. Rob's in the shot, obviously, in the beginning, uh, and um, <laughs> the, the they experience this sort of turbulence, and the captain says, I'll just get on the horn and calm everyone down. He lifts the phone, the the whatever he might be. There are five people in the carpet, which is a lot of people. So he leaves, he just puts the phone back down. He's not talking to anyone. It waits several minutes before that guy comes back, then lifts the phone again and starts talking. So it's like they, they messed that up a bit. So, um, they fly into the past essentially and, and uh, they fly and they know, they, they, they drop their altitudes so they can look for, uh, landmarks and they fly over Manhattan and they say, this is Manhattan. You don't get to see it, which is such a damn shame. I would have loved to have seen it, but I'm guessing there are, there are budget restraints. And they, he then says, you know, oh, it has all the, the landmarks, like Staten Island and yada yada. And then they, they get to see the dinosaur, but we'll get to that. The problem is, of course, that Manhattan Island wasn't there during the time of the dinosaurs. Um, if that's the brontosaurus, we're talking nearly 100 million years. And the continents weren't in the same spot. So there is no way they could have recognized Manhattan Island 100 million years ago or even 50 million years ago. It's just not a thing. It's not a thing. Uh, if you're transported that far back, no landmark will make any sort of sense at all. The continents move and they move relatively quickly in that sort of time span. Now, the dinosaur. So the dinosaur comes from uh, a movie called Dinosaurs with an exclamation point from 1960 and uh, and they just borrowed some shots from it. And of course there is no way they could have seen that because it would have required them to go so very very low and so very very slow. Um, but for the purposes of this uh, it works out fine. It's it's a nice little miniature. I, I like that they included it. Uh, it's, it's very pretty. Um, so uh, then they get into the jet stream, they fly again, they get into radio contact, and they talk to LaGuardia Airfield, which was in 1939. It, it was not called LaGuardia. Uh, it was called New York Municipal, Municipal Airport, I think. Uh, it, it was called LaGuardia Field, but certainly not LaGuardia Airport. And um, the air traffic controller is far too calm about this stuff. Uh, it's a bit of an anachronism. They they. But they do note that the um, Federal Aviation uh, is actually called something else back in back in thirty nine. So they do note that the language would have been different. They just didn't do it to the border. Um, this is a sort of flying Dutchman story where, and this is what I remember from seeing this for the very first time back in like the eighties sometimes. Um, where Rod says something along the lines of shoot up a flare, do anything, because they're trying to get home. 
Uh, it's a, it's a very sort of scary notion. Uh, this was made into a TV series. Uh, it's called Manifest. It was made like in 2018. I haven't seen it. I really ought to. Um, it's also all about, you know, a flight that goes missing for a few years and then comes back and, and the stuff that happened. Um, of course, the Langoliers, uh, Stephen King's Langoliers is a lot like this as well. So this pulls up a lot of the stuff that happens later on. Uh, Rod was innovative when it came to, to the writing like that. So, uh, I hope that they make it back, uh, even if they haven't by now. Uh, next week is uh, Herculean Strength, uh, Burgess Meredith. Oh, uh, such a great actor. And I will uh, see you then. <laughs> Take care for now.